Your source for everything paranormal, Para-X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Merry meet and merry parts, bright the cheeks and warm the heart. But tread the circle thrice about to keep unwelcome spirits out. Bide within the law you must, in perfect love and perfect trust. Mind the threefold laws you should, three times bad and three times good. These eight words the read fulfill, and ye harm none to what ye will. Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, Mary Meet, everyone, and welcome. Tonight, we're going to be Stirring the Cauldron with Dave the Bard. And in previous shows, we've talked about the Mabinogi, some of his albums, we've talked about music and lyrics. But one thing all those shows have in common is that we haven't talked about the instruments that make the songs and albums happen. Now, anyone who's been watching Dave's monthly house concerts, and you should be, um, you have a ringside seat and get to see the various instruments he plays, of which there are many. And I thought it was high time to feature them because they're not tools of the trade. They are spirits and personalities and have story behind them. And so, Dave, hello. And you've been away too long. <laughs> hello, hello. Yes, lovely to be back. Thank you, thank you for inviting me onto your show again. It's always a pleasure to talk. Oh, thank you. And, and now we have your instruments in the spotlight, too, so they should be a little bit happier, too, today. Yeah, they're, they're all sitting around my room here, eager to tell their stories. I can see them smiling away. Um, oh, yeah, they're usually in the background, and it's me getting all of the fame, but uh, now it's their turn. <laughs> well, yes, yes, it, it just, it's about time. That, that's what they're saying. You know, they're murmuring it behind your back, saying that. That's right. It's, well, yeah. you know, finally, it's happening. Exactly. You're nothing without us, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa. Let's put it there. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, because you often switch instruments during the house concerts, but I think I've lost count about how many there are. So how about a roll call to begin with? Oh, right. Well, OK, there is there are two acoustic guitars. Um, there is a bazooki. There is a mandolin. There is a um, Celtic harp. And I've also played my Anglo-Saxon harp as well. Um I think, I think that's. Oh no! And obviously the the baran as well, the um the frame drum, yeah. Mm, okay, so so, do you choose your instruments or do they choose you? Um, I think they choose. I think it's a bit of both, to be honest with you. Um, if we if we start with the guitars, um, I have a Martin, which is tuned to regular um guitar tuning. And I have a tailor, uh, which is a limited edition tailor, um, only made during one year. And that is tuned to D.A.D. G.A.D., which is like an Irish folk tune um, mm. that was made popular in the I think probably in the 60s or 70s. Um, and I, I have those two instruments tuned. So in, in different, you know, to the different tuning. So I don't have to keep retuning the guitar so I can grab one for some songs and grab the other one for the other um mm-hmm. the the taylor was my first guitar of the two and i remember going off to the guitar to the to brighton guitar shop and i wanted a taylor because john denver played a taylor <laughs> and i am a massive john denver fan i always have been all my life and i remember him playing a uh, a 12 string taylor uh, and also and a guild as well he played a 12 string guild but he used to play tw- uh, he used to play Taylor guitars and they just have this, they're about the closest acoustic guitar to a harp, uh, a, a wire strung harp that I, my ears can hear. They're very mm. twinkly 
um and i sat down and i just played loads and loads of guitars and then i picked up this particular guitar i started playing it and it was really weird everyone who was in the in the in the shop stopped talking and turned around to, and 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 looked at me mm-hmm. and one of them said that's yours that's the one that's yours <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and it was like I could speak its language and it spoke mine. And um, and and of course, that, it, it, you know, the, the, the guitar came home with me. Um, now, that's a limited edition Taylor. And that for a while was my traveling guitar. Mm. But one year I went and played a gig in Greece oh. and I had my Taylor guitar with me. And I, I walked out onto the, um, onto the, onto the, um, onto the runway area and I was asked to leave the guitar for the, um, baggage handlers to pick up. Mm. And I got on a bus and the bus didn't move away straight away and the baggage handlers turned up and they literally picked up this guitar and threw it on the back of a truck. Oh. And, and and the people around me obviously saw it was my guitar and, and you could hear people around me going, oh, no, like that. And, and, <laughs> and so I said to myself, if you make it home in one piece, I will never take you on the road overseas again because this guitar is irreplaceable. They don't make them anymore. Wow. Um, so I came back. It did make it back in one piece. And I've kept my word. The tailor has only ever stayed in the UK since. But I went out and bought myself a traveling guitar, which is the Martin. Um, and, and the same thing happened. Basically, I played loads and loads of Martins and then suddenly one of them just had the voice and had that spirit. And 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 um, and the Martin has come came home with me. And it's the Martin that goes on tour with me in Australia, USA, Canada, wherever I go. That's my traveling guitar. Mm. You know, mm. when you um, excuse me, but I just it came into my head and I'll forget if I don't ask um, you were. In your twenties, when you were playing drummers for the metal metal ah metal band, <laughs> yeah. And so, were you playing guitar before then, or did the drums come first, or or what? So, so I was taught Irish folk guitar when I was eight years old. That was when I started my guitar lessons with an mm. Irish folk musician called Tim O'Leary, and Tim couldn't read music, and I was his first student and so because he couldn't read music he used to sat, sit me down and um, and say you know right Dave where's I had a book that he used to draw chord charts in that's how sophisticated we were <laughs> and he said and he said, he said I won't do an Irish accent and, and insult all of your Irish listeners but he basically say Dave where's your book and I'd pass it over and he'd, and he'd say right this is a G chord and he'd say get me to close my eyes and he'd play a G chord and he'd say now this is a C chord is that higher or lower in pitch than the G chord I've just played you. And that's how he taught me how to play the guitar. He basically taught me how to play guitar by ear. So I still can't read music to this day. I've tried many times, but I think I must be musically dyslexic because I don't understand all the little (laughs) dots. Um, Mm -hmm. But basically, because I was taught Irish folk music, when it came to my tastes in music, which were ACDC, Status Quo, UFO, you know, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they play uh, electric guitars. And when I picked up electric guitar, I just couldn't play it at all. All these power chords meant nothing to me because I was used to finger picking and and mm-hmm. singing, you know, old Planksty songs and Raggle Taggle Gypsies and <laughs> things by Fairport Convention and that kind of that kind of folk music. So I found that I couldn't play rock on guitar. I just couldn't do it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be the one at the front. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Shredding the guitar. But I couldn't do it. But mm. what I found is, is maybe it was because of Tim, you know, but I found I had a natural rhythm. And I, I my mum and dad bought me a pair of drumsticks and I used to bash the hell out of my pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I heard Dave Grawl had an interview the other day, and he did exactly the same. He used to just bash the hell out of pillows. And in the end, they just said, oh, let's get him a drum kit. So, um, so, well, what happened is I went to a friend of mine who was, the, who was in the youth orchestra, the drummer of the youth orchestra in Southampton. And he had a drum kit in, his, um, in their, their caravan. And I just said to Philip, you know, can I, can I have a go? And so they left me on it. They all went out. And they came back and they thought, oh, Philip, that, that's Philip. He's great, isn't he? And when they opened the door, it was me. 
And it was my first time playing a full drum kit. And I think that was when my mum and dad started to take the thing seriously. Um, and they, they, so they bought me a, a drum kit. And then I got into the, into the heavy metal bands during my 20s. I ended up with a, any drummers in the audience who are listening to your show may remember this drum kit. It was an iconic drum kit from the 80s called a Premier Resonator Black Shadow. And it was the most beautiful looking sounding drum kit. I had two, I had a double bass drum kit because all heavy metal drummers had to have two bass drums in the eighties. And, uh, and that's how I, that's what I did all through the eighties. I was, I played the drums. Um, yeah. Those, yeah. Those were your ceremon- ceremonial magic days too, weren't they? Those were my, they, those were exactly my ceremonial magic days. Um, uh, those were the days where I mostly dressed in black, but I could never pull off the pull off the full gothic look because I had blonde hair. So <laughs> I never really managed the actual goth look. But, you know, I, my heroes were you know, the man in black himself. You know, I know that's Johnny Cash to many, but also Richie Blackmore to me mm-hmm. um, was the was the man in black. Um, and yeah, so so my my combination of, of heavy metal and and the and an interest in the occult. You know, all those <laughs> all those parents in the 80s who said that heavy metal would draw you to the occult. Well, I'm living proof it did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to hell. So this is good. Yeah, too. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to hell. But I did get into <laughs> magic through heavy metal and the lyrics of Ozzy Osbourne and Ronnie James Dio, you know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. So um, do you do you perhaps have a drum kit hiding somewhere in the house? No, no, I don't. Um, I always said to myself that if I got to a certain age and I hadn't made it, I was going to sell my drum kit and buy a Lotus Esprit car. Well, I didn't do that in the end. What actually happened was I was at my first Druid camp um, for the Order of Bards, Ovates and Druids. Mm -hmm. And I was a very young bard at the time. I'd only just started the course, just joined the order. And it was my first time meeting real life druids, and and I know a lot. Again, a lot of your listeners will know this feeling. It just felt, I kept, went to this camp, and it just felt like I'd come home. You know, mm-hmm. I I was I I'd met new, and my people, mm-hmm. I'd met my people, and we were I, we were sitting around a campfire one one night. The stars were out. I think it was a nearly full moon, waxing moon. And this voice, um, Austrian female voice said, um, you know, could I play my harp by your fire? And I just thought, oh, that's it. I've died and gone to heaven now, you know. And so <laughs> I laid down on the grass under the stars while while this this person who's become a very, very close friend of mine, Siggy, um, played the harp by the fire. Mm. And at the end, she said, um, if any if anyone wants to learn, have a go on the harp, uh, come and see me tomorrow morning and and you can have a go and literally i was there before she'd woken up <laughs> <laughs> i was outside her tent waiting so when she undid the zip of her tent this this blonde face just went hello can i try the harp and i tried it and she just because i'd been um trained in finger picking for irish folk i just mm. picked it up really quickly you yeah. know and she, she she said to me all all along you know of, of all of the people that she's introduced to the harp, I'm one of the ones that just thought, no, this 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 man has got to get a harp. Wow. So when I got back home, I put my drum kit up, up for sale, and that drum kit bought me my first Celtic harp. Mm, nice. So it wasn't a Lotus Esprit Turbo car, uh, <laughs> but well. it, it, um, so the drum kit went to a new home, and, and I... I guess that was like a, a statement of intent of a new direction of music for me as well. Really. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you can play strings and you can play percussion. Do you play any wind instruments or keyboards? I I, um, I have a go at a tin whistle. I've played the tin whistle on a few of my albums. You can hear that. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I can play it because I, I think there are some astoundingly good tin whistle players out there that I wouldn't insult for that. Um, and I've had a go at bowed instruments. So I've had a go at the fiddle. I've mm-hmm. also had a go. I've got, I bought a taggle harper, which is a, a Nordic 
um, instrument that is used a lot in the music of Wardruna. I don't know if you're familiar with them, mm. um, but it's a, a Nordic instrument, bowed instrument, very, very hypnotic sound. But I don't know what it is about bows. And also, none of these instruments have frets. I mean, what's that about, really? Yeah. You know, I don't know where to put my fingers. <laughs> So even on an even on the Tagle Harper, it sounds like I'm strangling a cat. You know, I just can't. I, I, I'll, I guess I'll keep trying. But if you can pluck it or strum it, I can pretty, pretty much pick it up, I think. You know, but mm-hmm. other than that, I'm, I'm outside my comfort zone or, or hit it with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, better than hitting you with a stick. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I, t- to me, a harp is very, very important and it. it Somehow it's very emotional when I listen to. I mean, when I was a kid and watched the Marx Brothers movies, and Harpo would sit down and play his harp, and he turned into a completely different person. Mm. You could see in his face that he was loving it, and he he was self taught. Yeah. And I was really lucky. Um, I was doing some freelance writing, and I was doing a uh, story on Harpo Marx, and I got a hold of his son. Uh, because I, you know, obviously he wasn't around, um, and he invited me over to his house, and you know, because I needed some pictures and stuff, and and he's a really nice man. And mm-hmm. as I walked in the foyer, um, in the front door, there was Harpo's mark. I mean, Harpo's harp, wow. just sitting right there, and it was just kind of a magical moment, you know. Yeah. 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 I think the the harp is an instrument that was I've always said this that was given to humanity by the other world, you know. Yeah. Um yeah. and when we play the harp, they hear it. You know, they they mm-hmm. they know that sound. So if you take a harp off into the woods, I used to do this a load, a mm-hmm. lot. Um you literally Beltane the 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 English you know, woodland is carpeted with bluebells. It's got that mm. fresh green leaves. And I'll just take my harp off, sit in the bluebells and play a harp. And um, and you can literally hear and sense the spirits all around you just saying, I know that sound. I've not heard that for a while, but I mm. know that sound. And and the harp is also, it's it's what I think it's the only instrument who, if you trace it right back to its or, or, complete origins, Mm-hmm. is a weapon because mm-hmm. the origin of the harp is the bow. Ah, yes. And so what what you know you've got that bowed um bit of wood mm-hmm. and a string and if you've ever shot a bow you, you it plays a note you go dong you know and it will play uh-huh. a note and it doesn't take you know it's a logical progression to say well I'll put another string behind it and another string behind it and suddenly you've got a chord structure and you've got different notes on different strings and that mm-hmm. that's the origin of the celtic harp is the bow yeah and it's Isn't funny it? i mean you know angels are always depicted with harps you know i wonder where that came from you know except that they're you know very wonderful instruments and and angels should be playing something so beautiful i don't know you know it would just be interesting yeah yeah, and 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 some of these biblical characters have bows as well, don't they? When you think about it, and put those mm-hmm. together. So, yeah. yeah, I think the thing is that the the, the harp, um, when when you play a harp, it's very difficult to make it sound bad. Um, even, even bum notes sound like the music of the fairy, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I just heard that in my head when you said that. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they 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 do it's very very difficult and i and it, and it's you know if if there is any instrument from the past that you associated with angelic music i'm sure it, it would have to be the harp mm-hmm. um, so yeah yeah maybe it's just a logical thing i uh, uh, what happened i i was i took my harp to many camps and uh, i i only ever play it apart from my house concerts mm-hmm. i never ha- i've never played this hmm, that's a lie. I've only ever played it live once in front of an audience. Um, and because the harp was my drum, you know, if I want to journey uh, mm-hmm. to other worlds and in, in meditation, I'll sit down and play the harp and it will take me off and I can lose literally hours for wow. it. 
Um, but I was at Harp camp. I was at a Druid camp, and there was a Harper there. And he he walked up to me, and he, his name was Puck. <laughs> Probably wasn't mm. his real name, but you know, Shakespearean, yes. <laughs> yeah. And he said, um, he said, every Harper, or there's a Harper tradition, and it is a verse that awakens the spirit of the harp and ev- and harpers have had this verse for centuries and every harper can give the verse to one other harper in their lifetime mm. and he said i want to give mine to you and so he 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 told me this verse um that he said was given to him by a scottish harper and uh, with the same story that it was passed on um to awaken the spirit of the harp and 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 years later i gave it to one harper as well so i've already given it away to my harper in this lifetime um but it's little things like that that make the harp such a magical instrument you know it's mm-hmm. yeah and so the idea is you you just strum the harp so it's string let me grab my harp mm-hmm. so i don't know if this is going to come across or if you can hear it but i've got my little harp here And while you're just literally playing these strings, just awakening the harp in your mind, you're saying this, this verse, and then the harp will awaken and... I don't know if that's come across or not. <laughs> yeah, it's it's lovely. I got a little teary-eyed, I swear. That's weird, uh, but I did. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to switch over quickly. Um, we're going to have a break in a little while, but I'd like to hear the story about the bazooki. The bazooki. Oh, okay. Well, um, I the my, my interest in the bazooki came through the mandolin. Um, and I, it was that same Obod camp back in 1995 where I met Ziggy. <laughs> I was um, by a different campfire and this bard called Andy Letcher, who was the singer in Telling the Bees, who were quite a famous pagan band for a few years. Um, he came to the campfire and just started to sing with a mandolin. And the mandolin is basically... Um, it's an eight strung instrument that is related to the lute mm-hmm. and it's very small and portable. Um, I don't even, hold on, I'll grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Now I haven't, I haven't tuned this, so it might be dreadful. Um, oh yeah, no, it isn't. Yeah, no, it's not tuned. <laughs> <laughs> but basically it's a very small portable instrument mm-hmm. and, um, and I just, I just fell in love with it. So at the same time as I, I sold my drum kit for the harp. I bought a, a mandolin and the bazooki. So the mandolin is that size. It's the size of a violin and tuned very similar to a violin, but you strum it and pluck it. And then you've got the tenor um, mandola, which is the size of a viola. And then you have a mandocello, which is the size of a and, and the pitch of a cello. But the mandocello is also the same pitch as the bazooki. It's a very, very similar instrument. And the bazooki is a Greek instrument, usually has mm-hmm. a has a round back like an armadillo um, mm-hmm. around the back. But in the 1960s, it was redesigned in Ireland as the Irish bazooki, which is basically a flat backed bazooki. Um, so when you see a flat backed bazooki, that's an Irish bazooki and a round back bazooki is a Greek bazooki. Um, mine is tuned to open G, uh, tuning and, um, and it's, it's another, it's another instrument that just, you can, you know, just takes you off into different places. Let me see if I can grab my bazooki. I hope these, uh, I hope you can hear me while I'm moving around here. Yep, we can. (laughs) So, um, So that's it. That's it with um, that's the intro of um, of uh, under a Beltane sun with a with a uh, a capo on, but 
but that's it it's a low low bass zone bass So you can hear it's very, very deep and rich. I hope that comes across. On yeah, <laughs> it does. And and you said that they it, it has a round back, but then the Irish one gets flat. Does it yeah. make a difference in pitch or, or resonance or something? It, do you, it, does do you it know, I think, I, I think it will make a difference in pitch and resonance. It, w- it really will. But I think the main reason they did it is because it's far easier to play. Because mm. it rests. <laughs> it rests like a guitar against your stomach um and trying to wrestle around back bazooki is is like trying to wrestle a, a wild animal sometimes you know to, it just doesn't rest properly where you play it yeah that makes sense i mean i'm all of a sudden i'm seeing hearing that you know you start to strum and everything and it starts going around your belly That's you know back right, and exactly. forth yeah yeah. And um, if you, you know, if you want to hear a bazooki played really well for Irish folk, it's Andy Irvine um, was the guy who really brought it to the fore when he was in the pla- in Planksty with Christy Moore back in the 70s. Mm. And he's he's a very, very well known bazooki player and a, 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 a genius at his craft. Wow. Um, this might be an unfair question, but. Do you have a favorite instrument or is that like asking a parent what their favorite child is? That is exactly what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in the room with me, Marla. I, I couldn't possibly say that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're all listening and, you know, I, what will happen is I'll say something and then the other guitar, you know, I'll be playing at the next gig and it will pop a string just to you know <laughs> out of spite yes yeah out of spite you know so i think it really depends on on the moment as well um yeah i've um you know my my i go through phases of enjoying different instruments and different tunings so mm-hmm. you know when i'm into into regular tuning and, and exploring that then obviously i play the, the the martin a lot more so it really depends on the on the song and things like that but but no i don't think i have a favorite instrument i just think they are all beautiful beings in their own right, and uh, and their voices are are all magical. So no. Have you yet to compose a, a song with the um, instrumental in? I mean, the instrument that you want to really showcase that in a particular song. Uh, yes, I, I've I've I bought myself an Anglo-Saxon lyre. Mm-hmm. Um, a few months ago, um, and and I, I wanted to do that because when you when you get new instruments as well, they they they, you know, they they offer different inspiration. You know, um, mm-hmm. a, an instrument tuned in a different way will get a different a different result of your awen, mm-hmm. and um, and I, I was very much looking into the Anglo-Saxon uh, period of time here. In, in in England and um, and discovered that they had this particular instrument called the, called an Anglo-Saxon lyre or a Nord harper. It's called the Nord harper, mm-hmm. uh, the Northern harp, and um, it's a very very simple instrument. But uh, there are, there are going to be tunes coming out of th- this little instrument without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, perhaps it's already, on the new album. Mm-hmm. Well, it might be. It's it's it's. It's guiding my hands to tell a story about Odin's two ravens, which is a mm. new territory for me. Uh, but Hugin and Moonin may well get their own song at some point in the future, and it'll be written on this uh, you know, northern harp. That's nice. <laughs> I'm waiting for that already. You know, I'm kind of rubbing my hands together, saying, "All right, get with it. Get it done. <laughs> get, <with> it. <laughs> yeah, get on with it." Because, yeah. I don't know. It, it's just it, they're so sweet to listen to. In in very, it it doesn't matter what kind of a song you're playing on it. You know, I mean, sometimes you're doing something very classical, and sometimes you're doing something very contemporary. And and but no matter, I don't think you can play anything bad on a harp. No, no, no. Even Yankee Doodle would sound good on a harp. You know, I mean, that bad, but <laughs> they're really good. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I think we are getting ready to take a break. So, um, and since we've been talking about the bazooki, and you gave us a little Twitter in a minute ago, um, everybody will be listening to the song that features the bazooki. So, sit back and enjoy Under a Beltane Sun, and we will return shortly. with Dave the Bard and his instruments. And this is going to sound kind of strange, but um, do all of your instruments get along with each other? <laughs> That's a great question. I think um, I think they vie for, vie for position sometimes. Um, <laughs> you know, I think they get a little frustrated if I haven't played them for a while. Um but they do, yeah. I mean, my my two guitars and my bazooki hang on the same 
the same stand here right next to my desk all the time. So, mm-hmm. you know, they've got no choice but to speak to each other. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get the I get the impression they're very, very friendly and, uh, and very open. Um, yes, yeah, spirits. So, yeah, I don't get any any impression that they're antagonistic or anything like that. <laughs> all of a sudden you walk in and you hear st- strings going all different directions. Um, do they have names? Have you named uh, them? They do. They they do have names. Um, the only one that has a public name is my small harp that I've played on the um, house, played in the house concerts a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, her public name is Blossom. Her actual name, her public name is Blood Eye With, um, which but basically she, it, Blossom is like a nickname um, because of uh, if you're familiar with the Mabinogi, Blood Eye With is the mm-hmm. maiden of flowers from the fourth branch. Mm-hmm. Um, so she is Blossom, but she also has a a secret name. And most of my instruments, that's as far as I go. I don't name them twice. Mm. So each of them has a kind of a, a, an inner name that I kind of ask. I I, I communicate with them using. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, this, I think that's a cold kind of old bardic thing, really. If you probably go back to the medieval times and the troubadours and the bards and things like that, I, mm-hmm. I would think that they they had relationships with their instruments as like as they were people. Um, but but names have power, as we all know. And and mm-hmm. I have a public magical name, which is, you know, Darv, but I also have a, a, a secret one, a private one that only the people in my grove will know me by. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit, a bit of the same with um, with the instruments, really. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, I just kind of thought that, you know, you, you have such a bond to them that they're their names would not necessarily be, hey, Sam, over here, you know, or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's just... Yeah, yeah, Michael the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think of folks' yeah. names, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which of the instruments is the elder? And, and The elder um, statesman? Yeah. The elder statesman, funnily enough, is Blossom, actually, looking really? at the instruments that are around me. She's... She's the oldest um, because I, when I got Blossom, I was, I wasn't really a guitar player anymore. I, like I said, I'd spent so long being a drummer in a in a in a rock band, mm-hmm. and and I'd really given up the guitar for years. Um, mm-hmm. And so the the guitar I had was really old and beaten up, and was not it was was basically the second guitar my mum and dad ever bought me, um, mm-hmm. and so. I got Blossom before I got my first pretty decent guitar. Um, so Blossom, Blossom is the elder stateswoman of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and then and then the tailor. The tailor was my first kind of um, okay. I can play the guitar again, guitar. So yeah, and the most recent, of course, is the Anglo-Saxon lyre. And I could tell you a little bit about that if you like. Yes, um, yes. Uh-huh. So, so basically, um, there's a there's a an ancient site in East Anglia called Sutton Hoo. There's a film about it actually called The Dig on Netflix. If people want to check it out, it's the story of Stut- Sutton Hoo and ha- what happened there. Mm. And it was just before the war, uh, Second World War, 1939. And uh, a local archaeologist was given permission to to dig in a couple of big mounds on this estate. And what he found there was was an absolute archaeological miracle, probably the find of of, of England. Um, and it was an Anglo-Saxon ship burial. Mm. And and, and the, the ship was an, uh, an old Anglo-Saxon long ship. The the body had obviously gone, decayed. But there were if if you you may people may be familiar with the the, the Sutton Who helmet, which was an old Anglo-Saxon helmet that was found there. Um, it's on the front of the Winter King novel by uh, Bernard Cornwell. It's used a lot, uh, and that helmet was found at Sutton Who. But what they also found was a couple of pegs, was a few pegs and some wood. And they realised that they'd found an instrument. 
and they they pretty much said okay we've found a harp so when they got the wood together and brought it back they put it in the museum and they arranged the shape of this instrument in the shape of a celtic harp but then a few years after the war they uh, they found another one of these instruments but in a grave in germany and then another one turned up in in denmark and they all and they realized that they hadn't got a celtic shaped harp they'd got this anglo-saxon lyre harp um and and they they realized that for a, for about a thousand years the voice of this instrument had disappeared from the face of the earth mm. And they found this instrument and then they started to make replicas of it. And it, the, the, the authentic ones are, they only have six strings. Um, and they are, obviously, we don't know how they were tuned um, back in, you know, the Dark Ages in Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. But again, I have this harp here. Um, I wish you could see it. But if you look up Anglo-Saxon lyre on Google, you will see pictures of it. And I, I just, I was, I was exploring um, the roots of England, I guess, and and this is what led me to this harp. And I'll, I'll see if it will pick up a little bit. Like I say, this one's got seven strings, but um, you can still get quite a beautiful little tune out of it. So. <laughs> That's mm. what the voice of the and and they used to um, actually they think they used to strum the harp and they would get chords from the harp um, mm. by deadening certain strings. So you know you would play the harp like this. So you can strum it and you can pluck it. And um, and like I say, you know, the voice of that, the vo that voice of that instrument disappeared from the face of the earth for about a thousand years oh until God. until they, they were started. They started to be found in archaeological digs in, mm. in Anglo-Saxon and northern graves. How do you tune a harp? Um, I, I, I don't I'm completely stupid on this, but because I know that the. the the piano kind of tweaks the string thing in the, in the piano, but um, is there like a little tuny thing you don't have like on the guitar, I imagine? So Yeah, so the harp has, um, have, has little kind of pegs that go through the body of the harp at the top, and they are held in place purely by friction. You know, that's the only thing holding harp strings and that Nordic harp. Uh, those strings are only held in place by by the friction of the wood against the wood. Mm -hmm. um, and with a with a Celtic harp, you use a, a, a tuning key. Um, mm -hmm. And and you I, I tune my Celtic harps in what they call three flat, which I think is E flat as a tuning. Um, and then you have um, along the top of the harp, you have semitone levers. And so they they push up each string a semitone coat so you can change the harp from a e flat to a c scale or a c, you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. and in truth i think that's why the piano and the harpsichord took over as the core instruments mm. because obviously every time you want to change key on a harp you've got to quickly take your hands off of the strings and quickly put up levers you know Mm -hmm. um that changed it and and concert harps have pedals but they didn't have those back in the day whereas the harpsichord and the piano those those semitone levers are the black notes on the piano so they're all there you haven't got to change anything so mm -hmm. um so that's how that works yeah 
Yeah. Mm, I'm in love with the harpsichord also. I just uh, can mm. sit and listen to that for hours and hours and hours. Um, I was like going through your blogs here and there, and I read that you were, maybe this is old news, but we're exploring getting another ancient instrument, the I'm not going to pronounce it right. The Tagal Harpa? <laughs> the Tagal Harpa, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think I've, I've already spoken about the Tagal Harpa because the Tagal Harpa is a bowed instrument. Oh, yeah. Um, and Tagal Harpa, Tagal, is, I think, means horsehair. I think it means horsehair. So oh. it's the horsehair harp. Oh. Um, and the, the inst- so the, the hair, the strings of the Tagal Harpa traditionally are made of woven horse hair. Mm-hmm. Um, from the tail, I should think. Otherwise, it'd be way too short. <laughs> um, and um, and and they're bowed, but they don't have frets. And you you yeah. you change the the notes of the strings by literally touching the strings where the notes should be, and that sh- it, that in effect shortens the string, so it, it changes the note. I'm not going to play the taggle harper because this is one of those instruments that I said earlier. Well, even when I'm tra- playing it. Sounds like I'm, you know, doing horrible things to it. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, um, but I am, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give up because again, it's a, it's a very shamanic, um, trippy instrument. Um, like I say, if you want to hear the, the the taggle harper played really well, listen to a band called Ward Runa, um, and they play the taggle harper a lot in their music. Um, you know that that kind of drone thing that just sends you off on journeys uh that's the taggle harper and so i'm very keen to learn how to play it but i'm not at the point where i'm going to play it down skype for you yet. <laughs> i won't twist your arm this time yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well um have you ever sat down with a huge you know orchestral harp you know the ones that you have to hold on your shoulder and get between your legs kind of one no i've never i've never played a an orchestra lever harp um mm. i've i'm still very good friends with siggy and she is a harp she 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 it's like harp um infection you know everywhere she goes she creates harpers <laughs> <laughs> she's spreading the word and, um, wonderfully yeah yeah and so um you know she she's had various harps over the years and they do vary um if anyone's listening to this thinking about getting a harp Mm -hmm. Um, my advice would be not to rush into it because harps are not cheap. And if a harp is cheap, it's going to be really difficult to play and tune. You, it's not an instrument that you can, you can get on, on a cheap, you know, you can't, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. a lot of the harps are handmade and if they're not handmade, you know, they're, they're, they're still pretty damned expensive. Um, and if you're going to spend that amount of money, don't buy one without playing it first, you know, go out and make it a quest because this, if you find one, you won't ever part with it in your life. That harp will see you through for the rest of their life. If you fall in love with it and, and it will, it will still be there when you take your last breath. So, so make it a journey and relish the journey to find your instrument. And in a way, I think that goes with a, with a lot of instruments really, you Mm -hmm. know, if once you get onto the, you know onto the guitars that you you you're never going to want to sell um you know you, again there's no point in going on amazon and just buying a, a guitar you know off the internet you know go out and hear it let hear its voice because mm-hmm. that's what you're going to fall in love with you know you, you're good that's what that you'll know you know you'll know when you when you start playing that instrument and it starts talking to you and you, you, it's almost like your fingers are being guided by the spirit of the instrument. And that's the one you'll take home. Yeah. And, and you know, if you walk into a music store, I guess you're going to be looking for something and it'll find you like like it did with you. Yes. Um, yes. And I mean, some people have talent for a wind and some people have talent for a string and other percussions and everything. <clears throat> and some people just don't have to play music you know to them they'd rather listen to it but Mm. but it's magical if you can you know um it it takes you into another world well Um, you know music was always my love at school and it and it always has been and i think everyone listening to this will uh, will know and remember a song 
that that came along just at the right moment in their life um mm-hmm. uh, whether it was heartbreak or falling in love or anything you know there's always there's that song that when you hear it remains remind will always remind you of that moment in your life and will take you back there and mm-hmm. um you know music is magic it, at the end of the day it's only sound and, and and it still astounds me how you know just literally vibrations on a string you know it, a, a, ma- a major chord will make you feel happy but move one finger down a fret into a minor chord and 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 that sound sounds more sad you know to, to mm-hmm. quote <laughs> to quote spinal tap you know c minor <laughs> is the saddest chord you know <laughs> but it really is so may, although I'd, I'd, I'd question that and say maybe e minor is the saddest chord you know? <laughs> <laughs> well it's all yeah. in the ears yeah it's all how you hear yeah do you Absolutely. have um do you have an instrument that you don't have now and are really thinking about something new and different to add to well, the collection, yes. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always you can never have you can never have too many guitars for, for okay. start. I don't think you know. Um, I I I I have got a beautiful twelve string, um, nineteen seventy six vintage twelve string. It's the same make and model as I say, played by um, John Denver. Um, mm-hmm. But it's such a precious and very, very delicate instrument. They made them in different ways back in the 70s, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I probably will go out and buy a, a, a take on the road 12 string at some point. Um, and I've always wanted to try a sitern. I don't know if you heard of a sitern. It's a, mm-hmm. a 10. Yeah. So I've, I've, mm-hmm. I've always thought, I wonder what that would like. It's like a, it's the next stage along from a bazooki. There's a couple of extra strings on there. Um mm-hmm. And like I say, new instruments can bring new songs. And I think mm-hmm. once you've got, once you've had eleven albums out, you know, and your 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 fingers automatically go to your favourite chords. And of mm-hmm. course, that just that gets quite repetitive. So, you know, when you when you say no, I'm going to write this song. I'm not going to write it on a guitar. I'm going to write it on the bazooki, or I'm going to write it on the sitern, or the or the saxon lyre, or something like that. It just opens up a different channel. Uh, to mm-hmm. that creativity and keeps things fresh so so i will always be looking out for new instruments don't you worry about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you could you know go into the winds and you can uh, you know get a recorder or oh, um, <laughs> how about a harmonica now see that would be very uh, i think the thing is i like to accompany my instruments and of course if you if you're blowing an <laughs> instrument you can't really sing very well at the same time so. no that that's very true yeah <laughs> I, I didn't think about that but yeah that, that's true uh, i can just see it now it, it yeah. would be like it would be like somebody with a ventriloquist dummy you yes. know you would talk yeah. for it and it would sing for you and it would be back and forth with the instrument <laughs> just well you might go on the road with that one um <laughs> really well it worked for bob dylan yeah <laughs> You know, okay, and you were talking, we're getting close to having to go, but you were talking about not being able to um, read music. But Mm. you do have songbooks out on Mm -hmm. your website um, so people can buy to get the chords and the lyrics. Um, So they're just little drawing. I didn't look at it. I mean, I didn't have one. Um, They're little drawings of finger places on the frets and stuff. That's right. That's it. They, they're, they're chord books, really. So they're, they're, so it's got the chords to the songs um, and where the chord changes happens, that's placed above the lyrics. So you know where to change chords. So they're, they're very simple like that. But there's not a note of music in them um, because I wouldn't even know where to start. And if you mm-hmm. look at The Green and Burning Tree, which is the first songbook, um, there are some some of those songs are written in Dadgad. And I don't even know what the actual chord is called. <laughs> <laughs> so so I've named them sort of G1, but it might be G, I don't know, it might be G suspended ninth, but I haven't got a clue what the G suspended ninth looks like. I just know how to play these so- these instruments that, you know, <laughs> and it, it sounds nice. And if it sounds nice, yeah. that's all that matters to me, you know. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I don't really understand music uh, and and the mechanics or the, science behind it even to this day but um 
but you know it moves something in me and that's what that's what matters to me I'm, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, when you said that i just wondered who invented music i mean who was playing with you know sticks or stones mm. or you know something and and music came from that that's kind of something i can't get my head around right now I, yeah you know. i don't i don't think concert pitch uh was invented that long ago really in the scheme of music uh-huh. um where where everyone said right that note there is a c you know i think yeah. what used to happen is they used to just ju- tune each instrument to itself yeah. um and it, and it only became complicated when you started to play in you know with other instruments and other musicians and then mm-hmm. whether or not you sat down and and chose a concert pitch and said right we will all be absolutely dead on or we or we'll just you know oh well we'll we'll all of us let's tune to the bagpipes because that's the most difficult thing to tune oh up. gosh yeah. yes <laughs> how do you know they're tuned you know exactly i mean yeah it's like yeah mm. <laughs> yeah I love hearing them, but I, it, yeah, that's another instrument that is very strange, but very nice at the same time. Yeah, that is an instrument that I am get, definitely going to get one day as a set of bagpipes. But Kerry said, if you get a set of, set of bagpipes, you're, you're learning how to play them up on the hills. I'm not having you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's apropos. I mean, that's where, you know. <laughs> march down the hills with your bagpipe yes yeah but but if that ever happens please do a video and send it to me please <laughs> you're on <laughs> thank you oh, okay well we are running out of time but before we go um let everybody know where the website is and give some information about the ho- house concerts because if you're not yeah. listening and you've never seen one you're missing out. So go ahead. Yeah, I, I started playing these little house concerts at the beginning of the p- uh, pandemic um, when all my gigs, gigs disappeared. And um, and they they were immensely uh, important to me and also brought the community together throughout that yes. period of time when we couldn't meet up. And I just decided to keep them going. So I'm, I'm playing a house concert every month on face on my facebook page and youtube channel uh, the hub of all things dave as ever is paganmusic.co.uk and if you go there on the concert page and keep an eye on there i put the dates of the um any forthcoming live shows and the house concerts there with links to the various you know social media platforms that i'm on i've even got a tiktok i'm down with the kids now I'm oh. down with the kids <laughs> tiktoker hey <laughs> yeah. I haven't quite got there yet, but once in a while it sneaks in and I, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not hard to find, let's put it that way. But No, I, once you found me, you'll never not find me. <laughs> well, that's that's the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah. that's absolutely the beauty of it. Um, and, you know, people, um, you can listen to the missed uh, concerts if you haven't been able to hear them live. They are available up there on that too. So, yeah, be there. And um, when's the next one? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hold on a minute. I can tell you. I can tell you. It is on Saturday, the 22nd of July. And they start usually, well, depending uh, on where PM, you are. 8 p.m. UK time, yeah. Yeah, which 8 p.m. UK time. In the States, and my time, it's uh, noon. And Right. But then we have so many different um, time zones here, so who knows? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. everybody go, and, I mean, you won't be sorry. You know, you just sit back and relax, and, you know, you just listen, and it's really wonderful. So thank you for doing those, and thank you for not giving them up. Because oh. even now, um, you know, the, the people that are in there and making comments and everything, you have absolutely made a new community out of thousands of people. And it, it's nice because we're from all walks of life and, uh, yeah. And from all over the world. It's, it is remarkable, you know, when I read back the comments and see them. And, and they're also very different because if I was playing a show at a, at a festival and somebody shouted out a question and I stopped playing and answered the question, everyone in that room would get really fed up. Yeah. But but actually, it works nice. You know, if I see a comment, I'll just stop playing and answer the comment and, and make it very interactive like that. So it's just great fun. Really it's great wonderful. Fun. Yeah. Well, as always, Dave, it was a pleasure speaking to you voice to voice again. And yeah. thank you for joining us this evening. And, and 
please come back, maybe not two years from now. God, has know, it really been that long? Something like that, yeah. COVID wow. got in the way, so yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it's a date. We'll do this before then. No worries. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for inviting me. And thanks for the listeners as well. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. Another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for another great guest and more fun. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2009.